I think my coffee addiction has returned. What's up guys, hope you're doing great, it's your boy Kobe Shots. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you a very sensitive story of mine. By the title of this video, you know what I'm gonna talk about, all right? Why I stopped shooting weddings. <laughs> all right, so this is actually the story. I started photography in 2015. I've said this over and over again, sometimes, of course, in my videos over here. And also when I'm talking to youngsters who want to start photography, I tell them a lot about it. And I always would propose or recommend wedding photography as something that you can start with to make money. Then probably if you want in the future to jump into another venture, you jump into it. I started falling in love with photography in my school days, all right? And um, I was testing out my camera, anything that I could get my hands on or anything I could view, I would take a picture of it and start a practice. And then I was developing more love. Now I needed to make money. And so wedding photography was what I jumped into. It wasn't easy getting into wedding photography because no one will just present their wedding to you on a silver platter when they don't have any proof of your work or you don't have anything to show for to them. So I had to, you know, get close to some wedding photographers who were already in the business, join them to their shoots and, you know, have them allow me put some of their work. And it wasn't easy because most often than not, I'll have to foot most of the bills, transportation here and there, having nothing in return in the end. But I'll come happily edit with their permission, put some of my social media platforms, particularly Instagram. And uh, I started getting clients from there. So it was just through that channel. And I think I've shared the secret with you that if you want to get your foot out of the door as a startup photographer, you need to join wedding photographers to get a portfolio so that you can show clients or prospective clients so that they will give you their weddings to shoot. All right. So I was shooting weddings almost every time. Of course, it didn't start as rampant as before, but it got to a point, I think 2019, that was where, or that was when I think things took the turn so so well trust me my mobile money account was literally full and i had no idea about the exceeding amount that you can have on your mobile money wallet until that particular day when a client contacted me and said kobe i've been trying to send you some money but it doesn't go through it sends me the prompt that there's an error somewhere or whatever and i've been trying to call you all day and i was actually busy that day so i found out later and i called her back and trying to find out what was particularly wrong. In the process of finding a solution to the problem, I realized that my mobile money wallet was full. That meant that I had a lot of clients. And for that particular year, I would take up like weddings three times a day, you know, every weekend I was shooting, literally every weekend. So it was quite, you know, roses for me. And uh, as I went on doing this and the pressure was piling up and up and up, it dawned on me that I have other interest, of course. I was developing the love for filmmaking as well, and I needed to purchase um, equipment and all that. So getting money from weddings and, you know, the situation where you have to always bring a lot of people on board to help you out. Maybe if you have two weddings or three weddings a day, you need to dispatch more boys here and there. And you can't always keep them because, of course, they also have their own brands to run. I found myself most often than not editing most of the work myself because I couldn't afford a lot of people on set. I couldn't afford a lot of people a day for a wedding and all that. So almost every time I was sitting behind my computer. And I remember in 2019, from November till December, I never stepped out. Even if I would, it would be for a short period of time because I had to quickly return and edit wedding photographs. Trust me, it was too much. It was so, so much that I developed a backache. <laughs> I did. And this was all because I had too much work on my hands. And because I had a lot of wedding pictures on my portfolio, in my portfolio on social media, people kept on calling. And of course, you know, when you want money and you need money to jump into another venture or to finance any other dream that you have, you're always going to take any offer that comes to you. All right. And I don't mean just any offer, but I mean any offer that will make you money. So that was the case. And as I developed backache and I always had too much work to be editing, it, especially photos, even videos, I was doing all that myself. And every weekend going out there to shoot, uh, things were becoming too stale. It's like it was too normal. The same thing, the same process every day. And here in Ghana, the procedures of weddings are mostly the same. Bridal dress up, you go to the bridal dress up. After you're done, you move all the way. Sometimes you can even take pictures of the groom. The dress up of the groom that's especially a white wedding but mostly with the traditional weddings the bride you are going to stay with the bride sometimes you see <laughs> it is even tough and to even acknowledge the fact that photography is supposed to be fun but weddings here in ghana where i live where i come from 
has turned photography into something that is abused and even photographers suffer for it because you can shoot a word and nobody knows who you are where you come from what you stand for whatever but because you're handling a camera and you're taking pictures of their um their relative or should i say your friend i mean the bride the groom whatever the relatives mostly will abuse you <laughs> and that's something that i always tell startup photographers that they have to have patience you shouldn't always only follow the money but you also have to have patience and passion for the job because wedding photography is tough especially here in ghana <laughs> i mean in my experience ghana is where i've shot weddings and uh, yeah i can tell you for a fact that you are in for a tedious run. <laughs> so you join the wedding, same process every day. The following weekend, you join another wedding, you shoot the wedding, you're going to meet the bridal dress up. After the bridal dress up, you move on to the premises of the wedding, take pictures of the decoration, you take pictures of the relatives as they come in. The same process every now and then. Exchange of vows. Everything was literally the same. And I was becoming tired of it time after time. Until a point where I realized that, no. Mm. Thing was too much because here you are always going to have to have people on your side you're always going to have to um, employ others to join you and even if you have two or more weddings a day you need to dispatch boys and my face was also all over my instagram page all over my social media accounts and people knew who i was and when they speak to me they know that it is kobe that i'm talking to so if you attend the wedding or perhaps you dispatch some boys to go for a wedding and they show up the bride doesn't see you or see me <laughs> they're going to be asking questions and they become uncomfortable because they felt or they have that huge confidence in me as a brand as Kobe shots and i didn't show up so they keep on calling me and i'll tell them sometimes i'll tell them lies i'm coming just to keep them at ease all right but most often than not it is always a long story a long tale to tell when you have to be apologizing for some misconduct from the guys and that's because of the things i just spoke about earlier that People will never know who you are, where you come from. As long as you're handling a camera, they think that they can just say anything to you because in quotes, their relative is paying you. And so you're indebted to all of them. <laughs> and looking at all these things, these factors, considering all these factors, I needed to find something else to do. And it's not particularly about the abuse that photographers will encounter, but it's because of um, how much my passion was drifting towards something else, right? Because first of all, I have a lot of things that I always want to do. I learn often on YouTube. And so if I see something and I feel that I can try it and I don't have the resources, I will have to find a way to be able to afford it. And that meant that I needed to work a whole lot of the time. So when I started doing filmmaking, I realized that I needed to create a lot more content, just like I did with wedding photography. And you know, aside these uncomfortable encounters that you may face at the faces of the relatives or people who attend the wedding, the wedding guests, most often than not, I always found myself in debt because <laughs> wedding clients don't normally pay in full. In fact, generally, if I was getting married, I wouldn't pay my wedding photographer in full. Of course, I'll pay half or probably a percentage that they may be offering that will be you know, quite sensible to me. I'll give them that portion and book them because wedding photographers normally have a lot of work to be doing because people keep on getting married every day, every week. You get my point. So I would love to book my photographer so that I know that my day is reserved for me. And when this happens, you're going to find yourself as a wedding photographer having money for a wedding that's going to happen or getting paid for a wedding that's going to happen in three months. Across the three months, you are definitely, definitely going to find something to do with the money. <laughs> you're going to spend the money. And when it happens, you're going to be paid the other part. And yet you still have to render the services that you've promised your clients to, I mean, to offer them. And from these same funds that you're going to pay your crew, you're going to pay for transportation or probably even worse, accommodation as well. Luckily for me, 2020 came and COVID hit us real hard. And I think that was the time that probably things were supposed to go my way. <laughs> because I didn't have a lot of pressure. People were not getting married because of lockdown and all that. So I had a lot of time on my hands to sit at home, look at new things on YouTube and practice. So I was shooting a lot of B-roll sequences and people were loving it. And I was developing interest in it as well as followers who were also engaged with the B-roll sequence I was creating. And I think lots of times I was getting work remotely and I was editing, taking videos, you know, at home. Try my hands on a lot of beverages, 
you know, shooting bottles, drinks and all that. And I was getting clients also to call me for it. And it was quite interesting because here I'm actually in the comfort of my home and I am creating videos as I wish, as I want, and people are loving it for it. And also as people are loving me as a brand for it, they are also employing me and getting me on contracts and paying me for what I love. And that's what it done to me that I think I need a change of trade. <laughs> I needed to change it because if my interest in wedding photography because of a lot of pressure and unnecessary encounters that you may find yourself getting into is here and you have another option where you're also getting, if not equally, the amount of worth in um, returns or in the um, um, how much you make and uh, you are getting the respect that you deserve. Why don't I just embrace it and start all over again like I did with wedding photography and jump into it. So I did that. I did exactly that. And today I'm here with over 3,000 subscribers and that's because I've had a lot of time. Back in the day when I was shooting weddings, not a single day would I have that interest to shoot a YouTube video, let alone edit it. <laughs> and now I've been able to you know, form myself up and create a lot of content because I put wedding photography aside, wedding videography aside, and uh, now I've taken up YouTube and I've also taken up music videos and that's what I mostly do. I shoot music videos and that's where I get a chance and I get more luxury and the liberty to control almost everything. Because there, they normally, I mean the artists will normally ask you for a concept, which I actually charge for in extra, that's even aside the entire budget or the main budget, which also is set aside from my workmanship. So here, let's say in weddings or when you're shooting weddings in Ghana, um, you're going to be charged, let's say, 4,000 Ghana CDs or let's say 5,000 Ghana CDs, depending on the budget of the client. If you look at these, it mostly um, encompasses the deliverables, um, your crew, anything like transportation. Sometimes if you don't take care and you don't add accommodation, if you're going to be traveling to it, you might have another competitor, another photographer taking it up and, you know, yeah, offering a better offer <laughs> to the client and you may end up not getting that contract and uh look at looking at all these you see personally personally i feel that wedding photographers or wedding photography for what's worth is not getting the attention and that kind of veneration that it deserves and if it's going to go on and i'm finding out that there's little to no way that you can change the minds of the clients, let alone we the photographers, to find a formula or find a format to go by so that we get back the glory in store. It's better to move away and jump into another trade. And I just did that. And I've never ever regretted it. Of course, from the beginning, even my parents will ask me, particularly my mom, that, Kobe, are you sure you can do this? Ditching wedding photography or ditching this particular um, venture, or should I say commodity, and it's going to start all over again in something different. Are you sure that's worth it? Yeah, I was really confident because for myself, if I believe this is how things are supposed to go, I believe in myself. <laughs> I always trust my instincts and yeah, I just did it. And now I'm much more getting a lot more contracts for what I actually love and not what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if you get the difference, but that's what I'm actually saying that. If you find yourself not loving something that you're doing, but because of the money and all that, and you're forgoing what your interests are actually about, you are making a terrible mistake, or would I say, you are not being fair to yourself. You have to love whatever you do so that you feel like you're not doing nothing as you even do it. Because you're practicing or you are doing something that you really love. And so if you have a lot of work piling up, you don't feel as much pressured as doing something that pays well, in quotes, better than probably what you are interested in and suffering for it. You understand what I mean? So make your choice. And that's basically the reason why I stopped shooting weddings. And I've never ever regretted it. When I started, it was difficult. Yeah, when I put it aside, the very first few months it was difficult, but now I'm embracing what I took as a decision. And uh, it has really worked out for me really, really, really well. So thank you very much for watching this video. If it encourages you to jump into something that you really love and sacrifice everything and start afresh so that you do something that you really love, yeah, 
smash the like button turn on the post notification button of course subscribe if you haven't that's the most important thing you need to do subscribe do that and uh, i'm gonna catch you in the next video so next video have a wonderful day see ya